Hey guys, I'm Hellhound, and uh, I figured I'd do a quick movie review before I uh, head to uh, the local local record store to see if I might possibly pick up some uh, good uh, horror Blu-rays, uh, some, some you know good horror movies on Blu-ray that I don't already own. So I figured I'd review uh, The Prowler uh, real quick. This is one of the better uh, 80s slasher films, released in 1981. Um, you know, typical sla slasher movie with all the uh, you know all the same uh, typical formula and you know, same cliches and tropes that are common with this type of film. Um, but, you know, this is definitely one of the better ones, and, uh, it was directed by Joseph Zito, uh, best known as the director of Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter, which is, like, arguably the best Jason film, um, so, you know, and his directing skills, I uh, hear, um, are very good as well. It also features, uh, special effects and makeup done by the one and only Tom Savini, so, you know, how freaking cool is that? Um, can't go wrong with that, that's a winning combination right there in my book. And, uh, it stars, uh, Vicky Dawson as Pam McDonald, uh, her and, uh, uh, Christopher Goutman as Mark, or, like, the main characters. And, uh, basically what happened was, uh, back in 1945, you know, when all the soldiers were coming home from the war, um, a, uh, a soldier was given a John Deere, uh, Dear John letter. <laughs> I watch Dumb and Dumber too much. Um, <laughs> he's given a, a Dear John letter uh, and broken up with by his girlfriend, Rosemary, and, uh, she's already found another man. So, you know, you just got home from the war and your, your woman leaves you. It's like, you know, she got tired of waiting for him to come home. You know, so she left him. And, um, so then Rosemary and her, Rosemary and her new lover are murdered. You know, a double murder with a pitchfork and, um, during a dance. And so, 35 years later, cut to present day, uh, 1980, um, you know, there's another dance held, uh, again, for the first time since that horrific evening. Um, and, uh, a killer has been stalking people one by one. More and more bodies pile up as he claims more and more victims. Um, he's dressed in, uh, U.S. Army, uh, World War II, uh, fatigue, so I thought that was pretty cool. He had, you know, wearing a mil military combat, uh, uniform seen here. And, uh, yeah, it's very phallic looking on this cover. I mean, uh, yeah, tell me that doesn't look like a giant... Anyway, um, yeah, he's dressed in, uh, <laughs> in a military uniform, uh, you know, with his combat boots and, you know, and everything. He has, like, one of those, uh, military-issued swords... Uh, or at least that's what I think it is, one of those, you know, large knives or whatever, and, you know, the helmet, he's got it all, you know, he's, he just looks like he just came from the war, uh, which is pretty cool, I thought that was a pretty cool look for a slasher, you know, right up there with the minor in the, uh, you know, the original My Bloody Valentine, um, so it was pretty cool, so yeah, I really liked the killer, and, uh, I really enjoyed, uh, the main character, Pam, uh, and Mark as well, Mark played the sheriff, um, him and Pam were the main characters, I liked them, they were likable enough, and all the other characters were kind of paper thin, and, you know, kind of one-dimensional, they weren't very memorable, and, you know, they weren't really, you know, all that great, uh, but, you know, who cares, it, you know, it's, you watch these movies for, you know, body count, some great gore, and great nudity, and it delivers on that front, um, and yeah, as I said, the gore effects by Tom Savini are very, very good, um, you know, and, and the, the killer is a mystery, of course, um, as I said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a whodunit slash, you don't know who the killer is, um, you know, it's pretty obvious that it's probably the guy who, uh, was broken up with at the beginning of the film, the one who killed Rosemary and her, and her, uh, new lover, um, you know, it's fairly hinted at, suggested that that's the killer, but you still don't know who it is, it never, it never, um, revealed the guy's name or even showed his face, um, back in the 1945, uh, uh, prologue, you know, in the opening, so, you still know who it is, so, so, I love, I love whodunits, you know, I love mysteries, and I feel like the slasher films that have, uh, have that as their premise are, like, the most enjoyable for me, because it's kind of like I'm figuring out, you know, trying to figure out who's doing the killing and the elaborate backstory and stuff, so, um, so it's pretty interesting, um, and yeah, as I said, the gore effects, uh, oh, wow, I mean, we have, like, stabbings with a pitchfork, we have a slit throat, a knife in the head, um, uh, near beheading with a, like, a saw, and, uh, the money shot being an exploding head from a shotgun blast, a guy having his head blown off and his blood everywhere, Tom Savini really outdid himself in this movie, it's definitely one of his better, uh, effects, or right up there, you know, the original Friday 13th, and the you know, final chapter, and Dawn of the Dead, and all the rest of them, uh, great gore effects, and great kills, you know, as I said, um, and this is the uncut version, by the way, if you see this movie, make sure it's the uncensored version, because the, uh, you know, the version with all the gore cut out is just pointless and unnecessary. Like, why even watch that? It's like watching, you know, it's like watching porn blindfolded or uh, listening to metal with, you know, on a really low volume. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, combining uh, Joseph Zito with Tom Savini and um, some... Uh, relatively, uh, some, some pretty memorable, uh, lead actors, uh, was a good idea, and a very memorable and, um, threatening, intimidating killer, um, I thought the killer was very menacing, it had a great look, and, um, and, uh, some great weapons, you know, he uses everything from a shotgun to a knife to a pitchfork to, you know, all that stuff, you know, very, very good killer with an awesome look, and 
awesome backstory. And uh, once it's revealed who the killer is, I didn't see it coming. I didn't figure it out, by the way. Usually, I, I, I always know, but in this one, I, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't even suspect uh, who it was, and you probably won't either. Um, you know, even if you've seen uh, you know, several slasher movies, I think it was still a pretty nice surprise. Um, so yeah. Um, and yeah, there's a few red herrings tossed our way as well. Uh, you know, we have uh, Major Chatham. Uh, you know, why was you know why was he in this movie again? Like, <laughs> you know, is the old man um, across the street? He's like a wheelchair-bound old man who you know. It's, I think he's supposed to be a military, uh, a veteran as well. So, so he's pretty much a red herring. But then again, maybe he is the killer. I don't, I'll never tell. You know, I'm not going to give it away. So, it's a spoiler-free free review. Um, but yeah, anyway, you have 80 slashers are your thing, and I'm assuming if you're watching this video, they are. Um, definitely ch add the Prowler to your list. Check it out. Uh, give it a watch. Um, you won't be disappointed. I, I recommend it. Um, it's not quite as good as, uh, you know, some of Zito's later work. He did a lot of action films, and, you know, of course, Friday the 13th Final Chapter, which, you know, as I said, is my favorite Jason film. Um, and kind of a quintessential uh, Friday the 13th movie. Um, check this movie out. Um, see some of his... Uh, some his early work, and definitely for, most of all, for a great killer, and uh, Tom Savini's awesome gore effects, and some really highly creative kills. Uh, this movie even has a shower scene that might possibly rival Psycho. Um, yeah, I said it. It might 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 just put the Psycho shower, shower, shower scene to shame. I say that ten times fast. It's like a tongue twister. Shower scene to shame. Um, <laughs> Psycho. Psycho shower scene to shame. Yeah. Anyway. Um, uh, well, I'm going off from rambling now, so I guess that probably means I... Just about covered it. Um, if you think you're safe, you're dead wrong. Um, yeah, I love the black and white opening. It's cool because it feels like, you know, um, also known as uh, Rosemary's Killer. Uh, the Prowler starts out like like it's like a, like there'll be like a war movie. It starts out, you know, she's reading the letter. It's playing this kind of romantic, kind of like soft music. Um, you know, if, there's, if you didn't know it was a horror film, like you might not see it coming. So it'd be kind of fun to show this to a friend and like don't tell him it's a slasher. Don't tell him it's a horror film with a body count. Um, just put it in and say, oh, let's watch this good movie, you know, and then the first kill comes on, you know, and it's like all black and white, you know, about the, the, the war, the, um, you know, they think it's like a different movie, like a romance, uh, like a war movie, or like a romance, like a drama or something, so I thought that was kind of cool, um, kind of caught me off guard, I, I guess, but yeah, I knew it was a horror movie, uh, but yeah, it's also known as, uh, Rosemary's Killer, outside the U.S., and, um, yeah, definitely one of the better films to, uh, grace the slasher subgenre in the uh, best decade ever, the friggin' 80s, um, check it out, I think you'll like it a lot, I'm not really, I'm definitely on an 80s slasher kick here, uh, lately, so, I actually watched this movie earlier today, and, um, I thought it was really good, um, now, uh, if I were, it, it's not without its flaws, um, you know, if I had to pick you know, some gripes of this film, uh, on the dull side of the blade, uh, there were a lot of overlong stalk sequences. Um, I realize this was made, you know, this was done, uh, this was necessary to build suspense, but I feel like someone went to way too long, you know, um, the main characters, like, searching a house or searching the streets in the dark or searching a cemetery, looking around, like, way too much of the film has that. I feel like it was just put there to fill the clock time. It's just, it's just filler. It's padding, you know, it's just there to make the movie longer. And they could have cut out, like, you know, <laughs> several minutes worth of that. The long, overly long stalk sequences and the chase scenes and, you know, the scene they're investigating. So there's way too much of it. And I felt like, after seeing this movie so many times, like, you know, when I'm, when I'm watching it now, I'm just like, during those, like, those long sequences, um, I feel like the movie's wasting my time, you know. And there's a few jump scares here and there that are kind of, you know, kind of pointless and just kind of, you know, like, it's just like, okay, I want to see, I want to know, after a while, you see, you know, you see the killer in his military suit chasing her around the house and, like, um, leaving roses on his, on the dead bodies of his victims, um, you know, after a while, just like, okay, I want to see, I want to know who the killer is and I want to, I want to know why, like, I'm just, I'm sick of seeing him chase her through the house and all this stuff, I just want to know why he puts roses on the dead bodies, I want to know, you know, um, I mean, it's obvious, you know, the beginning gives it, a, gives it away, uh, or maybe not, um, and so, yeah, I just want to see who it was, and I just want to know, you know, what was going on. So, like, I felt like, you know, those, those stalk sequences went on for way too long, and, like, it just wasn't really suspenseful anymore. It was just, like, kind of tedious and pedantic and kind of a chore to sit through, so. But all in all, uh, Prowler is definitely a good slasher. I might give it about an 8 out of 10. Um, it's definitely one of the better ones. It does everything right. Uh, great great kills, great gore, great effects, uh, great killer. So check the movie out for that. Um, and some good acting by the leads as well. So, and, uh... Definitely some of Joseph Zeta's best work right up there with uh, Friday the 13th Final Chapter. And, um, give it two thumbs up. 
All right, guys, I'm Hellhound. Thank you for watching my show. Check out the Prowler if you get a chance. You will not be disappointed. So until next time.